What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm taking a look at the sneaker releases in the second half of September and whether I think they're going to sit or whether I think they're going to sell. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't yet. Also make sure to give me a follow on Instagram and on Twitter at RealSethFowler. But with all that out of the way, let's get into it. The first half of September was pretty crazy because there was a bunch of surprise releases and release dates had moved around a little bit. Like we got the Undercover Element Reacts, we got the PSG Jordan 5s. It's a pretty good start to the month. But that doesn't mean the second half of the month isn't gonna be incredible as well, and based on some of the releases that are coming up, I'm very, very excited for it. If you aren't familiar with how this series works, first of all, thank you so much for tuning in for the first time. And second of all, basically what I do is I take a look at the sneaker releases in the first or second half of the month. In this case, it's the second half of the month. I tell you all the important upcoming sneaker release dates and let you all know whether I think each shoe is going to sit on shelves or sell out. Hence the name, sit or sell which I'm sure you already figured out. But quick disclaimer, these release dates and sit or sell ratings aren't set in stone, so don't treat them as such. Release dates have a tendency to change, which I know can be very frustrating, but it happens all the time. And of course, in a lot of cases, I get things wrong when it comes to the sit or sell ratings. I'm just going off my previous experience of buying a lot of sneakers for the last almost decade. So please don't base your buying decisions off this video. Buy a sneaker because you like it and not because some random dude on the internet told you to. But with that being said, let's jump right into the list. So the first day of the second half of the month, September 19th, we've got two more Nike releases, both of which are new colorways of the Nike EXP X14s. You've got a blue chill colorway and an emerald rise colorway. In my opinion, these are actually both pretty good looking sneakers. I've never owned a pair of EXP X14s, so I just don't know how they feel on feet, but I've heard mixed things from people all around the internet. However, I think there is actually a pretty big consensus that people do actually like the way this sneaker looks and I think both of these colorways do look good but unfortunately as we all know hype does seem to drive the sneaker market and these shoes really aren't anything special and they don't really have any kind of crazy backstory so for that reason I think both of these colorways are gonna sit. Moving on to September 20th, we've actually got a bunch of stuff dropping. First up, we've got the Nike Air Max Pompadour in gray. I had no idea what Pompadour referenced, so I looked it up, and apparently it's the Pompadour Architectural Center in Paris. So there are two colorways of this Air Max 1 dropping. We've got a gray colorway and then this white and blue colorway, both of which are actually really nice looking sneakers. And even though a lot of people probably don't know anything about the story behind the sneaker, I know I didn't, these sneakers will most likely be pretty limited. And I think that white colorway is gonna remind some people of the original Para colorway that came out a couple weeks ago. So I think there's the potential for both of them to sell out. Next up, we've got a drop of the Nike LeBron 16 in the bread colorway. The Nike LeBron 16 is the newest in the LeBron line of sneakers and overall, it's a pretty interesting looking shoe. Aesthetically, I don't like it as much as the 15. I think the 15 was really unique and really nice looking. This one definitely looks a little bit more performance driven, so I'm not as big of a fan of it aesthetically. But to be real with you guys, this shoe already looks a million times better than like five of the other LeBron sneakers, so I'm not mad at it. What were they thinking with the LeBron 13? Most likely this is going to be a pretty widely available sneaker so it shouldn't be too hard to grab. And even though it is a new LeBron 16, I just don't think that alone is enough to really drive sales of this shoe. So I think it will probably sell well, but I don't think it's going to sell out. Moving on to a trio of shoes dropping on September 20th that I already covered in the last video because the release date changed. We've got the Nike acronym Presto Mids. As some of you know, we had a surprise drop of the pink and blue colorway on the sneakers app about a week ago. And so I guess the shoe has seen sort of a very limited small release, but the entire collection of all three colorways is getting a much wider release on the 20th. Wider release is definitely a relative term because all three of these colorways are gonna be very, very limited. I actually got the pink and blue pair from StockX, so make sure to stay tuned for a review on that. And in my opinion, that's definitely my favorite of the three colorways because it's so crazy and so out there but there's definitely something to be said about that gray and green colorway and the gray and black colorway I think they all look nice and you can go to StockX right now and check the resale price of each one of these three colorways and it's pretty easy to tell that each one of these shoes is gonna sell out Moving on to September 21st, we've got the Women's Air Jordan 3 releasing in maroon. I think this shoe is fire and I'm very jealous that this is a women's only release because I think the shoe looks incredible. Ever since Jordan brand started their push towards women's footwear, we've definitely noticed an uptick in releases. Some of these shoes like the satin shattered backboards have been incredible. Other ones like the Rebels have been just total trash. But I can definitely say that there have been more good releases than bad releases and this design team is definitely putting out some really great stuff. This Jordan 3 is no exception and I definitely think it's gonna sell well. However, do I think it's gonna sell out? Probably not. Following up the 21st on the 22nd, we've actually got a lot of sneakers dropping. The first of which is the Nike Epic React in Copper Flash Crimson. This is a pretty nice looking shoe as most of the Flyknit Epic Reacts are. However, in my opinion, this colorway is more of a performance colorway than a lifestyle colorway. That sort of really bright orange look doesn't look bad on the sneaker whatsoever, but I just don't see many people rocking it just out every day. So for that reason, I think the shoe is gonna sit. 
Next up, we've got the Nike Uptempo 97 in black. I don't like this sneaker that much, and I'm sure there's a lot of people who have nostalgia towards it who will probably pick up this shoe. But I think a lot of the younger sneakerheads out there who don't really remember this shoe coming out probably aren't gonna pick this shoe up, and I don't think it's gonna be very limited, so for that reason, I think the shoe is gonna sit. Following that, we've got the SB Dunk High Humidity in gold, purple velvet. The only places that I know this sneaker are gonna drop are on the sneakers app and the store that originally inspired it. Not only that, but it's also a metallic gold SB High with a purple velvet liner, which looks incredible. I know for a lot of people, SBs aren't really the move anymore, and I definitely miss when they were because they had such a rich way of telling stories. Like each shoe was so different and had such an interesting look to them. I miss it a lot. But the shoe will be relatively limited, so it will be hard to get. So because of that, I think the shoe will sell out. Next up, we've got two collaborations between Adidas and Livestock. The first is the Livestock Adidas Ultra Tech GTX in yellow. It's an okay looking shoe, and I think it's cool that Livestock is collaborating with Adidas, but I just don't think there's gonna be a lot of hype behind it, so I think it's probably gonna sit. The second is the Livestock Adidas Terex Sky Chaser in stone. Again, a decent looking collaboration, but I don't think it's gonna be for a lot of people, so for that reason, I think it's gonna sit. Also dropping on the 22nd, we've got another Adidas collaboration, and that's the SNS Adidas NMD R1 Datamosh 2.0. A couple years ago, SNS and Adidas released the original Datamosh collaboration on the NMD R1, and that's back when the NMD R1 was a huge, huge hit. So the fact that they released a really good looking collaboration on a shoe that was just unbelievably popular meant that the shoe was extremely coveted. Now the hype on the NMD has obviously died down a little bit, so the shoe probably won't be as crazy popular as it was a couple years ago, but people are still gonna wanna grab it. There are two colorways of the shoe dropping, maroon and green, and black and blue. I love the way both of these sneakers look, and I'd be happy with either colorway. So I'm definitely interested to see if I can actually grab a pair, because I'm going to be in London for London SneakerCon when they drop, so maybe I can stop by SNS in the morning before the event. I didn't think about that. Hopefully that'll make it easier. We'll see. But if you're familiar with the collaboration at all, you know both of these sneakers are going to sell out. Next up, we've got two of my favorite releases of the entire month and possibly the entire second half of the year. I'm sure by now you already know what they are. They're both new colorways of the Air Jordan 1. The first is the Air Jordan 1 High in the pine green colorway. It has very similar color blocking to the bread toe ones and the shattered backboard ones, except this time around, obviously, it's in green. This shoe is so fire to me. I just love the way it looks. I don't have many green shoes and the color blocking on this one is so perfect. Damn, it's fire. I've heard other YouTubers say that this release will be pretty widespread, but they also said that about the bread toe ones and look what happened to those. You guys definitely understand the popularity of Air Jordan 1s and even though there's a lot of Foot Locker showing up on the release calendar, they're probably not getting too many pairs. So I'm trying to help you guys out here. If you want a pair of these Air Jordan 1s, don't sit around, go out and try and get them because they will not be easy to get. Because obviously this shoe is definitely gonna sell out. Next up is another shoe that I just got from StockX, the Air Jordan 1 Court Purple. I'm from Baltimore originally, so I'm a huge Baltimore Ravens fan, and this shoe just fits so perfectly with my Joe Flacco jersey. Not only that, you guys know that the Air Jordan 1 is my favorite silhouette, so this shoe paired with this colorway and this color blocking, damn, it's better than the pine greens in my opinion. I love it. If you guys haven't yet, make sure to check out my review on the Air Jordan 1 Court Purple, so there'll be a link at the top of the screen. From what I've heard, this colorway will be the more limited out of the two. So already knowing what you know about the pine greens, this Court Purple colorway will be that much harder to grab. So call your plugs, have your grandma in a raffles, do whatever you need to do because this shoe is not going to be easy to get. And obviously the Air Jordan 1 Court Purple is going to sell out. Moving on to September 27th, we've got the Women's Nike VaporMax Run Utility. I hate to say this, but I actually kind of like this shoe. I usually don't like VaporMaxes. I kind of think they're garbage, but this one's not bad. As of right now, it's also only releasing for women. So, stings even more. It's fine. I really don't need to spend any money on VaporMaxes, so I'm going to let this one go. With that being said, I don't think this is a bad looking sneaker and I think a lot of people actually really like the way this shoe looks. However, because of the fact that as of right now it's a women's only release, I just don't think it's gonna sell out. Continuing with the 27th, we've got three pretty interesting shoes dropping. These shoes are three different colorways of the Air Jordan 7 Low NRGs. The first is the Bordeaux colorway, the second is the Concord Black and Gold colorway, and the third is the Taxi Black and White colorway. I'm not loving the Air Jordan 7 Low. It's not my favorite looking low, but I've gotta be honest, some of these colorways, like the Bordeaux colorway, is actually pretty fire. What's also interesting about this sneaker is that they all have the NRG branding, which means they are gonna be very limited. I'll try for these colorways because if nothing else, I can get a review out of them, but I'm interested to know what what you guys think of these Air Jordan 7 lows, so make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below letting me know. Because of the colorways dropping and because of the fact that they're all NRGs, I think they're all probably going to sell. Moving on to September 28th, we've got the Nike Air Foam Posit 1 in denim. I, uh, I don't love this shoe. I don't personally have a problem with denim shoes. You guys can see that I have the denim Levi's 4s back there, but this particular denim treatment on this foam posit 
Uh, don't think it looks very good. In the same way those denim LeBron, I think 11s looked, it just didn't look good. In my head, I'm reminded of like the denim LeBron 11s, I think they were, that just looked awful. These guys just don't look good. And unless they're like stupid limited, I don't think anyone's really gonna want them. So because of that, I'm gonna have to give these shoes a sit. Moving on to September 29th, we've got the first of the Dragon Ball Z Adidas collaborations dropping. The first collab shoe to drop is the Dragon Ball Z Adidas Young One Frieza. I gotta put out a quick disclaimer. I've never actually even seen an episode of Dragon Ball Z. I've played like Budokai or whatever it was at my friend's house, but that's that's the extent of my Dragon Ball Z knowledge. From what I can tell from like the little bit of research that I did Frieza as a character, if you guys get mad in the comments, that's that's fine. I'm not I'm not mad that I didn't watch Dragon Ball Z. And this shoe obviously is based on the colorway of that character. I know a lot of you guys probably grew up with Dragon Ball Z and you're huge fans of the series and just love the fact that Adidas is collabing with them. Uh, it doesn't really do anything for me. I may try and grab the young ones for a review. That's about it. But because of the popularity of the show and of the sneaker, I think the shoe is probably gonna sell out. Next up is the Dragon Ball Z Adidas ZX500 RM Goku. Okay, I know who Goku is. I've, I've played enough of the game to know who he is. The shoe's fine. Again, I don't think people are gonna be buying the shoe because of the actual shoe that it's on. I think they're gonna be buying it because of the collaboration. And again, I think there's enough people who are fans of the show and who are fans of Goku because apparently he's like a main character on the show. Guys, seriously, I don't know anything about this show. But I think there's enough fans of the show that this shoe is also gonna sell out as well. We've got two releases, both of which are Jordan 20 Flyknits. You've got the black gum colorway and the olive orange colorway, both of which I actually don't think look bad. Jordan brand taking their original silhouettes and recreating them in Flyknit has always been sort of a point of contention for a lot of people because they just don't like that this shoe in their eyes is being ruined. In some cases, I think this Flyknit treatment has turned out very well, like with the Jordan 3 Flyknit and even the Jordan 1 Flyknit. Some people might not agree with me on that one. And honestly, in my opinion, I actually think this is one of the best looking Jordan Flyknits because I wasn't a huge fan of the 20 as it was and it already looked like a pretty futuristic silhouette so just adding flying it to this sneaker kind of makes it look even more futuristic so in that way I actually really kind of like it a lot and I also think the colorways that they chose to go with this sneaker fit really well but I'm just really not sure how people are gonna take this release whether they're gonna rush out to grab it or whether they're gonna kind of shy away I'm just not sure. However, in order to give you guys a sit or sell rating, I am gonna make a decision based off what's happened with the previous Flyknit releases where the first couple colorways completely sold out and then the remaining colorways kind of just didn't. So because of the fact that this is a new Flyknit silhouette, I think the shoe does have the potential to sell out. Next up on September 30th, we've got the Nike PG 2.5 in black and photo blue. I really don't have anything to say about this shoe. It's a black and blue PG 2.5. It's not gonna sell out. But before we end the month, there are two more notable releases that don't have release dates yet, but have pretty much been confirmed to release in the last week of September. And these two are both pretty big releases, which I'm sure you guys are already pretty familiar with. They're the off-white Nike Blazers in black and gray and canvas and orange. The colorways are also known as the Grim Reaper colorway and the All Hallows Eve colorway. The Grim Reaper or black and gray colorway is by far my favorite out of the two. It's just a clean looking colorway and the Blazer is already a pretty clean sneaker as it is. So paired together, it just looks really good. The All Hallows Eve is fine. I'm not a huge orange fan and I just don't think this colorway is that great but regardless if given the opportunity I will buy either of these sneakers because I love the off-white blazer by now I'm sure you guys all know the drill off-whites are extremely limited extremely difficult to get everyone wants them and these colorways won't be any different they're definitely both gonna sell but that pretty much wraps up the list for today. I'd love to know your thoughts on the sneakers that are dropping in the second half of the month and which sneakers you're looking forward to most. So make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet. And I'll see you all in the next one.